So when I heard I had Parkinson's disease, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was in my office, Sandy was with me. I was in a small conference room and uh, spoke to the doctor by phone. And um, it was hard, it was hard, it was a hard moment. My name is Rick Burkhart. I'm 67 years young, live in Bolton, Massachusetts. And I was di diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, I believe in 2009. Well, part of the problem with it was I had no idea. So I, but I was pretty sure it wasn't gonna be good. What it was gonna be, I had no idea. So um, I think part of the difficulty was just the unknown. And um, gradually though, it became a known and actually it became less, less difficult to handle as it became more defined. And um, over time, um, between meds and different things that in my life, you know, it's become, it's become livable. But I don't want to say it's easy, but it's livable. At the beginning of this journey, I, I was, I think, self-absorbed. I was living in my own bubble, figuring things out for myself that how other people were dealing with it. It was, I was oblivious to it. Parkinson's, so Parkinson's in my life is, um, is a, is a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of experience. There's times of the day, it's, it's a daily thing. It's almost like a ritual where part of the day I, I go about my day and you would, I think you would not, you would not know that I have Parkinson's disease. You, you would, you would see me and you would, you, you would have no idea that I'm dealing with a neurological disorder. Other parts of the day, um, I'm barely able to walk. So it a, so my experience from day to day is based upon med cycles. And um, so I'm, the things that I do um, are in an effort to um, lengthen the times when I'm on and I'm performing physically well and minimize the times when I'm off where I'm debilitated. So I was the kid who looked at airplanes when they went overhead and um, always wanted to fly and but didn't but didn't grow up in an environment that that was um, nurturing to that type of thing so I didn't have any idea what it meant to to actually learn to fly. So it wasn't until actually I was married and had kids that I started to fly. And I and I took it I, I took it pretty far. I got a private pilot's license, I got an instrument rating, I got a commercial pilot's license, I got a multi-engine rating, I had a flight instructor certificate and I, to the extent that you could take flying some distance in a in a, in a world where I was a father and a, and a CPA working in a business, husband, um, do, doing all that. So I took flying as far as I could and I loved it. Flying was a joy. So because of Chad and his program, um, I went flying. I went flying for the first time in 18 years. And um, we went up and we flew around the airport a couple times and I landed it hard and then my trusty instructor took over and showed me how to do it right and we had a great time. It was just a blast. It felt great. It felt great. It was it was good to it was good to revisit that world that I used to be involved in and haven't been in some time. Eighteen months ago I started a flight school here at Westfield Barnes called Fly Lugu Flight Training. Lugu is an acronym for look up, go up. And that's something that, as a pilot, my father, who taught me how to fly as a young young girl, also used to always say, when you look up, you're gonna, the plane's going to go up. When you look down, you're going to push the plane down. So it's just kind of a, a thing that I've brought through my whole life, because as we all go through different challenges over the years, it's like, chin up, let's go up, you know, let's keep your head up, all of that stuff. So that's how Fly Lugu, that's what the name means. And... Um, you know, today flying with Rick Burkhart, who is really just an institution here at Westville Barnes, 
was just something I was so proud that I was able to do and help him get back in the air through the efforts of DopaFit and creative neurology. It was just, it was my pleasure to be able to, to have him uh, take control of the plane. And, you know, it all came back to him once we were in the sky and he did a really good job. You know, today was just what it's all about. It's about giving back to the community. It's about remembering the passion of aviation and, and being able to really help people achieve their goals and their dreams. DopaFit Inc. started um, essentially in memory of my mother. Uh, she was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease very young at 50 years old. Um, she went undiagnosed for quite a while. Um, you know, back 10, 15 years ago, a woman with Parkinson's disease, um, a woman with symptoms of Parkinson's, they didn't necessarily look at Parkinson's disease. You know, she had um, a shuffled gait. She was suffering from depression and anxiety, which we found out later was due to the Parkinson's. So it took a while to get that diagnosis. Unfortunately, she passed away young at 55 um, due to complications of her Parkinson's disease. And I, I hit a low point in my life where I just, I didn't want to have anything to do with Parkinson's disease. Um, I was very depressed, obviously very upset. I just lost my mother um, at a young age myself. And eventually I started to um, use exercise and fitness to kind of dig myself out of it. Uh, and I decided I was gonna run the New York City Half Marathon. And I then decided that with that, uh, I'm gonna raise some money. I'm gonna raise some money for Parkinson's disease. And I finished it, um, raised a good amount of money, but most importantly, I was able to then empower myself to, um, to really fight back against Parkinson's disease. And the best way that I learned was through exercise. Um, it's the only thing proven to slow down the progression of the disease. I had already been working in the fitness industry so it was an easy transition. Um, and now I can say that although I miss my mother more than anything, um, I'm grateful that my life has you know, been led in the direction that it's been led and that I get to help people um, live well with their disease. And what this project Limitless um, by DopaFit was an extension of that. Um, one of the things when someone comes to DopaFit and we do our initial evaluation and interview is I ask them, what is something that you used to do before your Parkinson's diagnosis that you don't do now? Um, and there'll be many things. Something is, you know, riding a bike. Some people even something as simple as putting on a sock. Um, and then, you know, in this case, Rick used to be a full-time pilot and just kind of always kept that in the back of my mind. I thought Rick would be the great first candidate. Um, you know, he's a client of mine for many years, but I also consider him a good friend. And I really wanted to see him be able to do something that he loved to do for many, many years that Parkinson's took away from him. So we, we set it all up. Um, today we got him in, the plane, in a plane for the first time in 18 years. And there's a thing called pre-flight, which you go around the plane and you, you check the fuel and all these other things. And watching him do it, I just, I couldn't believe the smile on his face just doing what they call pre-flight. And for most people, the pre-flight is just a tedious thing you have to do before you can take off that everyone just wants to get through and get in the plane. And I felt like Rick was enjoying every single moment of it. And he didn't let his Parkinson stop him from doing something he loved. We were able to um, put all this together so he can do it and bring that, that joy that, of aviation that he's always had back to life. This was our first installment. We hope to do this at a minimum four times a year, every quarter. With the proper funding, our goal would be to bring this all over the world, to find people living with Parkinson's disease across the globe that we can help them do something that either they always wanted to do or something that they haven't been able to do due to Parkinson's and make it in a safe way. It, it just, it brought you know great joy to me to see how happy he was um, and that again, that. Today, he lived his Parkinson's disease without limits.